guys, Stad Shoemaker, Shoemaker Guitar Works. Back with this uh, late 1800s uh, violin, German violin. And the name brand, I cannot read on this thing. It's all in German. I'm going to have to get one of my friends that uh, reads German or Czech to uh, be able to decipher what the heck this thing is. I uh, wish I could uh, tell you what it is. But anyway, it's time to start cleaning this thing up. And I've got a soft rag here and I tried some uh, uh, 409 or Lysol or whatever. I don't know what it is. Uh, soapy water. And that did not work. So what I'm going to do is I've got 4 rot steel wool here and I've got some naphtha. This thing is really, really got a lot of, I don't know what on the surface, but in order to clean this thing up properly and make it shine again, I need to get whatever this is off of here. Yeah. I don't know if it was an attempted refinish at one time when it was repaired or what. And there's several different ways you could go about this. This is just kind of how I like doing it because then it kind of gives you a clean, flat surface to put your gloss on. Then I'll take some of this soapy water here, cleaner and water on soft rag. And just kind of go over the thing, clean it all up. And I know you, it looks to you like the surface is ruined, but it is not. See, that's all dirt that's coming off of there. So, I'm just gonna keep doing that and I will bring you back when I've got this thing all clean. All right guys, so I got it all, uh, got the top all cleaned up and got all that goo off of here. This rag is pretty nasty. So now that I've got that cleaned, I kind of cleaned up the back and sides a little bit as well. There's still a little bit more kind of stuff on here but I think most of this will polish out on the back anyway um, so my next step is going to be doing a little shine juice to the top and just kind of uh, make it make that finish come back out it's never going to be perfect and I'm not looking for perfect I'm just looking for preserved I guess you'd say you know uh, we don't do restorations as much as we do preservations so uh that will be the next step and in the back here with the uh late 1800s violin and it's time for shine juice part three actually putting the shine on it and i don't know if you can see in the video but uh, i've already kind of done the back and sides and anywhere this thing can shine i'm bringing it back and uh it's just part of the, the preservation of the instrument, you know? And uh, I actually took a little bit of brushing lacquer and where it had been repaired, they scraped the, uh, the finish off of it, which is pro the proper thing to do. Uh, but they kind of didn't do a great job of it. So I went ahead and kind of just took some brushing lacquer and went over it just to kind of fill it in a little bit. So it's got a little protection. There was a raw spot on the back right here that I put a little brushing lacquer on and uh, just tried to blend it a little bit. Uh, again, it's about the preservation uh, of these things. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take some of this Meguiar's Fine Cut Cleaner and 
put a drop of it on the top. The nozzle's clogged, so I gotta do it this way. Nope, too much, perfect. And I've just got an old t-shirt here, cut up, that I'm using. Get this, wipe it on here real good and everywhere you can get to. I've also steel wooled the ebony fretboard just to uh, bring the natural ebony shine back to it. And you just wanna do this real good. And this takes some elbow grease to do. and get up underneath that fretboard a little bit, or fingerboard. So used to saying fretboard for uh, guitars, but uh, that's not the case here. There is no frets on a fiddle. a little bit this thing's had an attempted refinish at one point in its life and it wasn't done the best uh, in fact whatever they used looks really bad um, but you know it is what it is it's a hundred and what hundred and eighty year old instrument hundred and sixty year old I'm not good at math uh, so anyway you know it uh, it is what it is but like I say, it's about the preservation of these things, and we want them to look as good as they can. Even if they just hang on the wall, we want them to be functional and pretty, or as pretty as can be, you know? Uh, part of this might be just from uh, the bow over the years and uh, the rosin coming off of it and eating into the finish, I'm not real sure. Still got a little bit on this rag. I'm gonna try and get some of these rougher areas here with the shine juice. Gotta be really careful around the F hole area that you don't uh, press too hard and kind of bust through it because that's very possible. And maybe not so much with an older violin like this that's made out of real spruce, but if you're working on one of those new cheap uh, Chinese made ones, uh, they're pretty brittle. Whatever, I think they use birch plywood on them and they're just not very stable all right so got step one on there i'm gonna fold my rag to a spot that hasn't been used and this is uh the mcguire swirl remover Probably too much, but hey. And again.
again, it just takes some elbow grease. And I might have to go through this process two or three different times to get my desired shine. But like I did in the other video, kind of wet sanding it down with naphtha and 4 aught steel wool helps a lot because it gives you a new surface to shine up. It's like wet sanding a, a vehicle before you polish it up. Uh, but it seems to work pretty well, especially on these older instruments with varnish or nitrocellulose lacquer, or in this case, I think both, because I think it's got both on it. Take my clean rag, clean it all off. So areas like this are still going to be flat because that's where it's just worn down. But as you can see, I mean, the rest of it's got a nice sheen to it. And that's, you know, that's kind of how I want it. This area will be covered because that's where the chin rest goes. Uh, and you won't even see that. But uh, it's, like I say, I'll probably do this a couple more times. And uh, then my final step will be a combination of boiled linseed oil and uh, furniture wax or uh, beeswax, either one. And uh, that brings out the shine even more and puts a nice protective layer over the top of it. And uh, basically what I do is I, uh, and I've showed this on other videos on uh, old guitars and stuff, but I will take the rag and I'll get it covered in uh, uh, wax and then put a little bit of boiled linseed oil on that and just work that into the surface just like I'm, you know, working and polishing this onto the surface. But using these Meguiar's products, it really uh, helps shine up the instruments and give them back a new life. I really like using these. Uh, being, I'm not sponsored or anything, but hey, Meguiar's, if you're watching, uh, I love your product. I use it on my cars, I use it on my, my instruments, and whatever. So, uh, shameless plug, but, uh, you know, if it works, it works. But, she's shiny again, and like I say, I'll probably do this a couple more times. I'm, I'm, I still want to work on this, and I want to get it as shiny as I can, because uh, that's driving me crazy. And I know it's just the natural patina of the age of the instrument, but uh, like I say, it's driving me crazy. I got the back and sides shined up pretty well. And, uh, uh, you know, so I want to make it as pretty as possible, even though it'll probably, you know, it might get played. I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's definitely a great conversation piece, a piece of his family history and, uh, I want to make his mother proud that uh, I uh, restored this thing for for him. You know, uh, she's been gone for I don't know how many years, and uh, so this is kind of a commemorative thing to uh, to Dwayne's mom. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. You have a great day. Hit that like. And subscribe.